can they make women's costumes sexy and men's costumes uncomfortable as fuck? Because none of you guys would come to the costume parties <laughs> if we all dressed up like we look every night before we go to bed, mm. right? Like, I'm, I'm, can I borrow one of your t-shirts and I'm gonna put my hair in a bun and look all messy? If we're like, I'm gonna be a slutty nurse, you wanna come to the Halloween party? There's bound to be other slutty nurses there. Oh, good. Then you'll go to the Halloween party, sure. right? See, that's what I'm saying. Happy Halloween, everyone. Jen <laughs> is gonna talk about all the Halloween related games, scary games, creepy games, her survival horror, whatever else you want to pile into that genre. Yep. You played how many? Uh, I played 13 this year. Lucky number. Lucky number 13. It seemed fitting. I was going to go with an even 10, but I was like, 13 is great for the spooky season. That's the best number. So what kind of clown are you supposed to be? First one on the list is Iris Fall. Iris Fall. Okay, so this was a game recommended to me by Retro88. Fantastic game, all puzzle platformer. So you're in this shadow world. She wakes up from a dream and follows a cat into a theater, and it's very creepy. Every I've followed some cat before. It's nothing but trouble. <laughs> it's nothing but trouble. A pussy cat? I didn't say that. Okay. Anyways, it's all a shadow world. It's all puzzles. Some are harder than others. Not a crazy expensive game. Last time I checked, uh, when I bought it brand new, it was 50 bucks. So I'm not sure what it is right now, but I'm going to say it probably didn't go up in price. I feel like I've seen it cheaper at the pawn shop. Yes. Second hand. And uh, it's like a three, four hour game. Oh. So it's not going to take you a long time to play through this game. And at that price point, I can get on board with that. It's a great game to put you in the mood for Halloween without jump scares. So it does have a creepy undertone. Everything's in black and white, mostly a little bit of sepia tone. But yeah, you're meant to go behind into the shadows. So some of the puzzles, you will have to go in behind the shadows and work it that way. So it gives a different dimension than most of these kind of puzzle, puzzle platformers do with okay. that aspect. I really enjoyed it. Next on the list is the game I wanted Jen to do a review on. She refused. I and did. you should chew her apart in the comments. <sighs> Little Nightmares 2. In all honesty, I did write up probably 75% of a review for you this one. You couldn't line. follow through. <clears throat> it wasn't that. It got busy. It was a busy time of year. And I just, I didn't end up doing it. It, I may eventually end up doing it. But same thing here, puzzle platformer. You're not playing a six this time, although she is in the game. You're playing as Mono. And if you liked the first Little Nightmares, this is very comparable, but it gives you the extra ability for Mono to use weapons, not all the time, but he gets to swing certain weapons. Uh, he can call out to six, she'll come to him. They help each other. so he helps or she helps him up you had an interesting theory i did on the game. do you want to reveal that now or do we want to push her to do a <laughs> review so she can tell us what it was i don't know uh i don't know what do you think what do you think i should do i think you should do it in a review okay next on the list yeah. is a double pack it is a double pack so i played both on the xbox one you have inside and also limbo yes and you played both right i did play both inside was a bit freakier than limbo Inside, you start off the game, your boy in a red shirt, you're running away from people. They're trying to catch you. We have no idea why. So you're just, you don't really have anybody helping you in the game. It gets very dark in the end. It's a puzzle platformer. Uh, not a long game again, I probably three, five hours long, maybe a little bit longer. There is this girl underwater. She's trying to pull you down. Oh. It seems as if she can breathe underwater. At first, you have no idea who she is. She's just swimming and you're like, oh, I wonder if this is my friend. And then you die. So you're like, no, not my friend, <laughs> not my friend. And she pops up a few times in the game. Now, towards the end of the game, this is when I was telling you it gets really creepy. No, do you remember? No spoilers. I'm trying not to spoil it, but do you remember walking downstairs? Is that the seeing blob? The blob, uh, yeah. Yeah, I seen that part. It was twisted AF. I was like, where is this game going? <laughs> but yeah, um, messed with my mind in the best way possible. You can't fight back. Again, puzzle platformer. 
fantastic game. I got this pack for pretty cheap. Limbo was all black and white. And you, Let me look at that. yeah, there are some theories about Limbo. Really? Hailing from the name. Um, at the very first of it, you see a girl and you go to try to reach out to her and the ground falls beneath you. And she, I feel like she's hanging from a rope. And like. I think so, or she falls <laughs> to the ground. I can't remember, but there is a girl. And you basically come full circle in the game. That's the last place you land in the oh. game is back there again. And she's in the grass. Now, I don't want to necessarily spoil the game, but the theory was cool and it might end up ent um, enticing you to play the game is that they're in limbo and they died and you're trying to find your sister. Hence the name. Hence the name. Hmm. So there's a lot of like little children that are trying to kill you. Nobody in this world is your friend. And the most gruesome death was the spider. The great big oh. spider that the spider leg just goes right through your body. Um, you can't swim in this game. You can in the other one, which kind of weirded me out because I think I played inside first and then I played limbo and I so went to swim to and I died. <laughs> so yeah, swimming, no swimming. No bueno. No, no bueno. No, no buoyant. You just sink. Both great games. Both great games. Super affordable. Pick it up. Next one on the list is an original Xbox mm -hmm. game. So you actually played something retro. I did. You have still life. Yes. So you are a detective, um, Victoria McPherson. It starts off in what would be their modern day, Christmas day. You're trying to solve murder. So are There's, we talking like 2001-ish? Yes. Mo their modern day? Yeah. So you're trying to solve a murder. There's been a string of murders, um, mostly against like sex workers, prostitutes, and uh, they end up d being killed and kind of like this killer is kind of an artist too at the same time. He's like setting them up kind of tastefully in his mind, I guess. But I was playing this and then I go to my house. I go up to the attic to look through some of my grandfather's old stuff. And then you're thrown back in time to Europe and you're the grandfather. But I mean, obviously you're not old. You're, he's a detective oh. as well. And the same thing happened in his time. So all this time, I'm like, this gotta be a 70 year old killer. Honestly, it's probably a copycat killer. They don't cover that in the game. Um, yeah, really cool game. There were some very annoying parts, making cookies. The, the stupid puzzles. The stu there some, some of the puzzles. There are some really bad puzzles that I've, Ugh. I haven't played it, but I've seen reviews on it and stuff and like making the cookies there. like. People, then had people no had point said, being in there. Go look it up online because there's no way you can figure it out. Yeah, and yeah. then the robot that you have to get to go up on the wall to go around. I've never seen that, that one. That one was friggin' annoying. And yeah. then just certain things like having to mix something with something else and then doing this. It was people, tedious. Tedious trial and error. It was. Yeah. So I still enjoyed the game. Still life, still enjoyed the game. Um, I don't know if I would play it a second time. We had talked about Yeah. Time. Yeah, it was enjoyable enough to get through it. Probably not a second playthrough. No. Not super expensive. So if you want to pick it up and try it for yourself, you may feel differently. Um, I can't wholeheartedly recommend it. No. Unfortunately. Next one on Next the one. list is an Xbox One game, The Invisible Hours. Yeah. So. When I picked this game up, I didn't know much about it. I looked at the back, I was like, sounds cool. Ooh, it looks pretty. Yeah. Um, it looked very murder mystery. I wasn't wrong. You're investigating the murder of Nikola Tesla. Uh, I think I might have seen yeah. a quick couple minutes of you playing Yeah, this. I think you were playing the game as well. So how, you se how it's set up is a group of strangers is invited to his house and they show up and he's dead. He's dead in the front foyer, and now you're in the middle of a murder mystery. You have to figure out what happened to him. You don't have any control over what happens. You are basically a participant, like a watcher, without 
any real control. You're participating by moving through everybody's storyline. So you can take the camera. It's like watching a movie. It kind is. Of. It, it's a movie you have more control over. Yeah. Because you can go and go through everybody's storyline. So you're like, okay, I saw him go over here. I'm going to go follow him. But while you're doing that, you have no idea what's going over here. So it can take a long time to go through all that if you really, really want to be... I say long time for a game like this. We're talking three, four hours. Yeah, it was but a one sitting. It was done. a one sitting, but it felt like a long time compared to a movie, right? Yeah. Because you're following multiple time or multiple uh, storylines at once. There was no payoff to the ending. Do I you solve the murder? No. You see the murder. If you can so. guess it beforehand, congratulations to you. But at the end, I was just like, am I done? I'm oh, done. Yeah. I'm done. I There is a zero hour in this, and that's where I got to. And I think you're meant to try to solve it for yourself, not for the game purpose. To know. So it's a one and done playthrough. Yeah. There, no there, nothing would change. There's no replayability. But that being said, it was cool. It okay. was an experience. If you like a walking simulator, simulator, that you know, it, it's kind of that yeah. with a little bit extra. I I didn't mind it, and it wasn't expensive. So if you like that sort of thing, and you want just a creepy environment, it's cool. I yeah. I don't think it's bad. You recommend it? Yeah, I'd recommend it because yeah. of the price point. Another Xbox One game we mm -hmm. have made of Scare. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, baby. Um, I was initially terrified of this game. I, I put it in at first and I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't even know if I can play through this. And then once you realize what you're supposed to do, it's not that bad. Okay. But it is creepy. It's a creepy ass game. So you're going to, you get a letter from your lover, I guess, and you're asked to come to the uh, Scare Mansion, I yeah. think it is. And once you get there, shit has gone sideways real fast. There's people walking around that can't see, but they can only hear. So, this is when I found out what I needed to do. I thought I needed to hold my breath, because that's, that's the action you make. You hold your breath when they're getting close. I thought, as long as they weren't close, I didn't have to hold my breath. I was wrong. If they're within a radius, you yeah. have to hold your breath the entire time or they will kind of hear where you are. Oh, they hear you. They do, yeah. Okay. So your whole the whole point of the mission is to get these cylinders to create this grand harmonium and they will basically wake these people up or like put everything back the way it was and you're trying to find your lover at the same time because she's going to help you. Now, I haven't seen any of this game, but no. the way you're describing it, does it have any kind of like Silent Hill vibes to it? Um, ish, no, no. maybe. <laughs> there's no fighting in it. So it's yeah. all stealth. It's really freaking cool that I've never seen anything like that, that you have to close your mouth and cover your mouth and okay. try to be quiet. It's really, really cool. Um, yeah, it was an experience. I really enjoyed the game. It's not expensive. Uh, I would say you're probably looking at eight to 10 hours, maybe a little bit more. Really? Yeah, it's phenomenal. And I do know it's on PS4 as well. Next one on the list, Jen did do a review I on did. it. It is Alice Madness Returns. Yes. And you should put a link I will put a in link. For, for your review that you did. It didn't get nearly as many views as it deserves, in my opinion. Well, you know um, what? I was quite pleased because review videos, if you're a smaller channel, usually don't get, don't get a lot of views. This one has over a thousand views. I actually have this one on PS3 as well. I loved it so much. I needed it on both. If you know anything about Alice... Said like a true collector. Said like a true collector. If you know anything about Alice... Um, the storyline, you, you see lots of familiar characters, so that's really, really cool. She has, she was living in kind of a group home situation, mental hospital. She's trying to figure out what happened, how her parents and her family ended up dying, what, it still feels mysterious to her. She's not getting all the answers she wants. So she goes back into this dreamland, into Wonderland, and 
yeah, it's the fighting combat is cool. The different weapons are cool. I cannot recommend this game enough. I know, you love that one. I yeah. love it. And it's not expensive. Again, it's a $30, $40 game. Oh, I don't even know if it's that. I think yeah, it might Xbox, have came down in price. 360 I feel like it's more of a $20. It might be. You know, we're talking Canadian dollars. Exactly. This is a great game. And uh, great for Halloween. Great any time of the year. Just find a way to play it and play it. I did do a pseudo review. PS4, you okay. have the Resident Evil. Yeah. Game. This is a fantastic game. Um, I really, really liked it. I have played the original. Um, and I feel bad saying this because a lot of people love the original. I like this one better. And that's probably just because <clears throat> it's modernized. This is one I I still haven't played yet. I have played the original. I know. You played three. You <clears throat> played the remake yep. of three. It's Ooh. so good. That one's way better than three, right? Yes, I really, really like this one. Was more, I, I people say it was more true to the original story than three was. Okay. That's what I'm hearing people say. Um, don't be a dumbass and forget your best weapon. It's not good. <laughs> I, I assume that's what you, were, you did, right? I did that. Yeah. Uh, so much replayability to this game. I. I could talk to well, you about Resident Evil 2, but I feel like everybody knows about Resident Evil 2. There's two storylines, There's right? two storylines, and so it's it's come down a bit in price. Yes. Yeah. Um, you should be able to get that for 40 or under. I yeah, think, I think point. so. But yeah, if you've played it at all, I, I feel like there's a part in the game that I don't remember from the original, and that is with Ada Wong. Oh. She goes into an incinerator, and she has this device. Kind of gave me watchdog vibes with him like fixing electrical oh, yeah. currents and like switching them around. And she does that in a couple places. And then you don't play as Ada Long. You're back to playing as Leon yeah. pretty quickly. But I don't remember that in the original. I don't think it was in there. I don't remember it either. But I've played so many games in yeah. between that it's hard to remember. But yeah, yeah phenomenal game. Uh, again, I can't recommend this enough. Especially if you love Resident Evil. Yes. All right, we have a new one. Yeah. Tormented Souls mm -hmm. on the PS5. This gives me all the throwback vibes of what survival horror started as. Yeah. Um, what I loved, first and foremost about this, is that you had the option of playing with the DualShock analog or playing tank controls with the D-pad which was really, really cool. Uh, for the most part, phenomenal game. The story gets a little muddled right, right, right towards the end. It d didn't really hurt the game for me. I still loved it. If you have played Resident Evil or Silent Hill or even Alone in the Dark, oh, yeah. this is a lot like that. It's, it's, it's so like that old school survival horror that if you enjoy that you'll enjoy this just with enhanced graphics yeah you're going you get an, a letter in the mail you need to go to this i don't know house turned into asylum hospital always always, always a mansion exactly yeah. there's some strange ass trippy experiments going on there uh the best piece of advice i can give you for this game is conserve your ammo because stingy yeah oh wow oh wow and there's not uh there's no difficulty settings you what you get is what you get you get what you get and you don't get upset and you just play the game or you get upset or you can get upset but there was some complaints online about why would we want to play with a fixed camera angle because they were going for nostalgia yeah they weren't trying to piss you off it's just nostalgia deal with it it's it's just a game it's just a game. Try not to get too upset about it like I am right now because you're complaining about it. Alrighty. Just bring them both, both out together. Both out together. No. This is blasphemy. I yeah. had it. I couldn't find it originally. The Evil Within number one on the Xbox One. Mm -hmm. The Evil Within two on the PS4. <gasps> blasphemy. <laughs> Do I have them on both systems? Yes. You have one on this. I don't know if you have two. I have two. <laughs> oh, you got them on both systems? That's I have two. And uh, initially, when I picked them up, I picked it up because uh, as a group, me, Davis Dudley, and Everyday Retro Gaming, yep. 
uh, had a little talk about it live, and this was the only copy I could find at, at a pawn shop. It was weird because there was a stretch of probably three or four months where we could not find a copy in town. I, I don't know. know what it was. And I know. They're, like, they're still hard to find on the PS4. Yeah, so. so I got Evil Within on the Xbox. But this is how you played it. You play that on yes. the Xbox, you play this one on yes. the PS4, so that's how you're bringing it in. Yeah. So in the first one, you are investigating a mass murder at, I think it's a hospital, because they're always at a hospital. Um, you go in with some other agents, and then you go into this like warped alternate world. You hear a bell or a chime or something, and then all of a sudden you're in there. This story is a little bit disjointed. There's parts of the game that are super difficult for no reason, especially during, kind of at the first, because it was like, holy shit, if this is how hard this is, you're in this village at the, uh, towards the first of the game. Yeah. And you're having to take out this big enemy, and I'm like, I, I got like a rock. That's how they weed Not out really. the sissies. They That's weed, how they weed, weed out the sissies. Weed out the sissies, get them out of the game early yeah. on. Yeah, but everything is chasing you, and it's hard to get away from it to find anything substantial for a weapon to kill that first enemy, in hindsight, it you know, you're like, oh, he was nothing. Freaky ass game. I I think this might have scared me more than the second one. Oh yeah. Yes. I don't know if I was just more seasoned by the time I got to this one. Possibly. Or if it was just not as scary, but the story in number two and the gameplay in number two is fantastic. People rave about Love how much it. better it got it, from it one did. to two. It really, really did. And I love that. Like, if you can step up and be like, okay, we hear you. We know what you're saying. We're going to fix that. And the biggest fix I found in it is when you save. So in the first one, you go kind of through to this other warped world, kind of a safe spot for the most part. Oh, I There's a nurse behind the desk. And you can go behind it. There's some lockers. You can pick from lockers. You pick up items, uh, keys that'll unlock the lockers. Same thing in number two. And then you go to level up and you sit in this like electric chair and it levels you up. Different kind of skill trees you can pick from. Well, they're in different spots. So there's a lot of unnecessary walking. Okay. In the second one, you would just go into this warped world she would be right there. The lockers would be right here. You'd be sitting in the chair. You're golden. You're good. You're doing it. User-friendly. Very user-friendly and cuts out a lot of unnecessary travel for no reason. Okay. But the enemies in this one were really, really cool too. Uh, you're going back into the STEM project. You get into the STEM project here with Ruvik. You get more into it here. You're trying to find out about your daughter who you think you think is dead. It's not dead. Thank you. Is that a spoiler? Dead. Uh, well, it's it's very spoiler. no. It's it's in the first of the game. Okay. That, that she's actually not dead. She's the core for this whole STEM project. She makes it run, but she's missing and it's falling apart. And now they're pulling you back in because they think that you can find her, that you can solve the problem. When in reality, you're fine, you'll go in, but you're just getting your daughter back. You want your daughter okay. back, right? So, uh, great two games. I, seriously, the first one's still worth a playthrough. Both games, super cheap. Either one you get do them Do you on. have to play one to I play two? I don't feel like you do, no, but, but it would help the agent, uh, the female agent from this first game is a bigger character in the second game. Okay. So... I liked that if you play the first game, you're going to see that tie. Yeah, you wouldn't need to, but if you're a fan, you should. You should play both. Both games are good enough to play through. Yes, right? absolutely. Now, this was a must play for a recommendation for Dennis. For yes, me, right? yes, and- Is that level... why you got it on the PS4? Well, no, I wanted them on the PS4. You have to have an excuse, and yet, so yes, uh, yes. Yes, so Dennis could play it. This was also a big uh, recommendation from Level 857. Yeah. Yeah. Last game. Last game. Is the only game that I've played in this whole list. A little I'm, bit. I looked at the stats. You haven't here. played the whole thing. No, I didn't. 
I kind of get bored of it tonight. Oh, man. I know. I, people will chew me out for it, but it is days gone. Days gone. gone. You're the reason we're not getting a second one. You're uh, the reason. I bought it. <laughs> I know, but you're not giving it enough props that it deserves because it is a fantastic game. I thought it was drawn out. You know what? There are some parts where you're like, I feel like this is getting a little drawn out, and yeah. then it throws you into another map that you yeah. have to go across and you can't come back. They literally say that to you. You're going over here, yeah. you can't come back. You're playing as Deacon. You're trying to find out what happened to your wife. Uh, you guys get split up right at the start, right at the start of the zombie apocalypse. And you are with Boozer and you go with Boozer because he doesn't look like he's gonna survive mm -hmm. unless you help him out. She takes off in a helicopter and yeah. She got to the chopper. She got to the chopper, she was injured. So she needed yeah. to go. But yeah, you can't, she's presumed dead. You can't figure out what happened to her. You uh, end up getting in contact with a doctor or scientist for the Nero agency, which yeah. is like a whole other thing. You, you have to play through the game if you haven't, because I don't want to spoil too much for you. But it's, it's open world. It's, it's a long game. It's a long game. There is hordes of zombies. Yep. Yeah. Uh, put yourself in the mind, and I'm pretty sure that I read that this was the whole kind of inspiration for the game. Sons of Anarchy meets Walking Dead. And you could see that. I could probably see that. Yeah, because yeah. he's a biker. Yep. And, they're in, and they were in a biker game. Yep. And the hordes are... Whew! Some of them... Like, I, I feel like... I think I could do it better now. Yeah, I feel like it was probably... A zombie game done right. Yes. Like the hordes, that's what they're supposed to be. Oh, like they're yeah. They're supposed to be overwhelming. In the they world. are, and terrifying. Mm, and yeah. like, uh, I say terrifying, but it was stressful. Very oh, yeah. stressful. And Sometimes you would run really. Oh, man. <laughs> the zombie bears. The zombie bears. Zombie bear was awesome. Those were crazy zombie, yeah. big ass zombie wolves. Yeah. I never got to see the zombie wolf. Oh, they're, they're crazy. And you could upgrade your bike, you can upgrade yep. your weapons, you can upgrade your trust at different camps. Yep. So it there was a lot of leveling up you could do and so much to explore. Great game. Yeah. If you haven't Un played it, play Unfortunately, it. That, that game is a victim to circumstances of trying to meet deadlines mm -hmm. and pushing it out when it wasn't ready. Yeah. And I think they lost money because they did that. Maybe. If they had to just wait it, push back the deadline, released a proper game that worked well, yes. it would have blew up. It would have. It, it would have really been a game would've. of the year. It's probably in my stack, my number one. Out of all those? It, out of all these. And I know Little Nightmares that. 2 is in there, yep. and I really enjoyed it. But Even I Even over Alice? Oh, oh. shit. Oh. Oh. Let's say three-way tie between Days Gone, Alice, and Little Nightmares 2, because I do love Little Nightmares, the, the franchise. There's a mobile game, too. Very I Little think Nightmares. I heard that. Very I, Little yeah, Nightmares. I I so, yeah. Mm. Uh, the only one in this sack I can't, like, fully support 100% is Still, still Life, but life. every other game. Go out and pick it up right now, because I... Yeah. Do it. <laughs> it's uh, Halloween! Cool. Play your scary games. Do you enjoy the costumes? Because I absolutely fucking hate it mine. <laughs> did, you, <sighs> did you like mine? I do. I, I'll like it later too. <laughs> oh, 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 look, I bet you have marks all over my head. You're digging into me. Yeah, you have here. marks and sweat. Oh, I'm dying. Okay. I'm absolutely melting. I think I lost about my a beer's worth of weight. You have to have another beer then. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Until next time, game on.